What our community wants from the arts. We'll find out more next on City Corner. I'm Steve Potter and welcome to City Corner. The Regional Arts Commission just had a big reveal. There's a lot to talk about, so let me introduce my next guest to my immediate right is Felicia Shaw. She's the Regional Art Commissioner's, the Regional Art Commission's, I'll get that right, uh, Executive Director, and also here is Monty Levy. He's the Chairman of RAC, the Regional Arts Commission. Welcome to you both. Thanks, Thanks for having, having us. us. Yeah. And uh, Mont, this is, you've been around for three years, I think in that position, but mm -hmm. this is new to you. I have just been appointed by the mayor as chair of RAC and very excited to take the position on. Uh, does he have the right qualifications? All of them. <laughs> <laughs> and more. <laughs> why did, just before we even get started here, why did you want to be a part of the Regional Arts Commission? You know, I have, I'm a lifelong St. Louis and have been involved with the arts one way or the other for my whole life. And um, Regional Arts Commission, as we're going to talk about, has done just such important work in supporting and promoting the arts. I wanted to be part of it. Right. And before we talk about this big reveal and, and other things that are going on, uh, Felicia, uh, for those people, I bet there are some people that don't, they've heard of RAC. They may but have they may seen not our really building. Know what yeah. it's all about. Yeah, they probably drove by our building in the loop. We're right across the street from the pageant. And you've been around for 30 years. Been around for uh, more than 30 years. So explain it to people who don't know. Yeah, so we were established in 1985 uh, by a state legislation to promote the arts. And most people don't know that 100% uh, of our funding comes from hotel motel taxes. So when people stay in a hotel, part of that money goes to support the arts. So don't let your company sleep on the couch. Make sure they stay in a hotel. <laughs> and isn't it true that you, you, you help all kinds of people and organizations? Aren't there, just for an example, there might be some big, well-established um, theater groups that you From support, the established, but also mm -hmm. maybe like a little, uh, a little small independent theater, theater company, group. sure. From the St. Louis Symphony to uh, Smoky Monkey Theater. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yes. You know, you've got a, a, a picture of our logo, and that's what people will know because they will see it in programs mm -hmm. for all these different arts organizations they go to. Actually, the first photo I think your folks have. Yeah, yeah. yeah. there it is. There's that logo. You that's see. what people will know. And why the colors and the does that symbolize something? It does. It's about vibrancy, and you can kind of feel the energy that's happening here in St. Louis uh, symbolized in that logo. Well, how important is the Regional Arts Commission to theater groups? Gee, I, I'm being facetious here. Gee, I thought they all made a lot of money. <laughs> well, you know, I'm sure that they would love to, but one of the things that we do that I think is really uh, important is that we provide reliable, renewable funding to those organizations. And that's just one thing that we do. We have a building where groups can uh, perform and rehearse. Some of those small groups can't afford rehearsal space, so they can, they can go there for no cost. And uh, we have many other programs as well. Okay. Well, what we want to talk mm -hmm. about is an initiative that you had, Evoke, and then the big reveal you just had. So do we start with Evoke first? Well, actually, yes. We really should go back to the history. Okay. So Evoke was our moment to pause. We talked about the fact that we were formed in 1985. A lot has changed in the arts over those years. And we thought, well, let's take a moment and check back in with the people of St. Louis and ask them, how do you value the arts in your life, and how can the arts play a stronger role in making St. Louis a better place to live? That seems like such general questions. Uh, but you are there more specific questions buried in there, or is it supposed to be a general question? It was meant to start out very broad because people got very specific about what they wanted to tell us. They told us all kinds of things. We learned so much through the process. Well, and again, yes, I, and, and we're going to uh, see, we talked one way or another with over 3,000 people in St. Louis, mm -hmm. whether it was through individual interviews, whether it was through group sessions, whether it was through community gatherings. We had surveys. <laughs> well, before we talk about what mm -hmm. happened, I think we do have some uh, maybe images of some of the events you had. I recognize that from in Grand Center. That's in Grand Center. We had a huge event to launch our uh, Evoke, which is our community engagement process, and people came out because they too wanted to know you know, where are we today and where should we be going in the future? It was a wonderful launch event. I think we have a couple more. Let's, let's take a look. Yeah, so people are That's listening. the same event there. Same event, yeah. 
And it looks like just a wide variety of people crop up. Yeah, now, that was is that a performance? That's a, yeah, it was Mark Vermuthi from Oakland who came out to kind of set the stage for us. Oakland is another one of those great, vibrant American cities and um, really got us in the spirit of thinking about change and where we're going to go in the future. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you started this event, you started, people started coming to things like that. You started hearing, were there common threads? You know, you must talk to a thousand people. Were, did you hear a thousand different stories? Oh, the stories were magnificent. Um, and there were some things that we learned that we didn't know. We talked about the, the economic impact of the arts. Um, we fund over, well, we fund a hundred, 100,000 uh, people or arts organizations a year. But one thing that we learned is how many people are hired through the arts. 19,000 jobs we learned through this process. In, in St. Louis, yes. 19,000 full-time equivalent jobs come through the arts. So, Do you see the shock look on my face? Yes. <laughs> I can't believe yeah. the numbers are that high. 591 million dollars of revenue. Mm -hmm. Over 11 million people attend arts events in St. Louis. It's twice what they the sports events Yeah, I'm looking gather. at some facts and figures that you sent. 19, over 19,000 full-time jobs yeah. uh, result from the arts. Just what you said, $591 million in economic activity right. from the arts. Mm -hmm. and the not-for-profit arts. Yeah, we're not even talking about the Fox and all those other uh, for-profit venues. Because they don't need your help, right? Well, they're doing pretty well. Right. And, and that's what makes our money so special. St. Louis's arts and culture industry, according to RAC, and we also, are an industry. <laughs> also draws more than 11.7 million people to arts and culture events each year. Right. That's right. And that makes, I have to point this out, this, this is what will bring it into a focus, I think, for most people. That makes the arts audience larger than the Cardinals and the Blues audiences exactly. combined. How about that? Exactly. You know, so a lot of parents say, oh, get a real <clears throat> job. Well, we make real jobs in the arts. How many other organizations are like RAC in the respect of, um, of helping nonprofits? Um, we belong to a network of like 5,000 local arts agencies throughout the country. So Chicago has one of us, and Los Angeles has one of us, and Detroit has one of us. So we're very, very fortunate to have uh, a rack here doing the same kind of work. And uh, I'm not sure if you made this point, if I'm repeating you, tell me. But since the inception, uh, RAC has awarded more than 7,000 grants, totaling over 100, 100 million. million. I guess you did say yes, that. Yes, that was the, the number I was searching for. $100 million has gone back into the arts and culture community. They all came from hotel motel taxes. And I think what's also important for our taxpayers to realize is that the arts generate locally, local taxes, nearly four times what we get in tax revenue. And it's another um, four times it goes to state taxes. Do you ever get any pushback? <laughs> um, just that, uh, gee, arts aren't essential. I mean, that's just sort of a luxury, <laughs> and we should be spending money on infrastructure. <laughs> I don't know. You know what? That's what's interesting about St. Louis, and one of the things we learned through our process. The people in St. Louis really value the arts. Other cities may have that debate, but not here. People here get it. Why do you think that's true? I think it's part of the culture, it's part of the tradition. I mean, ask the Muni. I mean, the Muni has uh, subscribers that are generational. Right. Uh, they pack the house. And so it's just what St. Louisans do. It's, it's our way. Well, Mark, you grew up here. Do you have an insight into that? Well, I think that we have, in this community, have had an understanding of the importance of mm -hmm. the arts that dates back to the, f the creation of the Zoo Museum District. Mm -hmm. Our great institutions are free to the public. People might not realize in most cities, zoos and art museums are not free. Not yeah. close to free. Not close to free. It's, right. it's a once in a lifetime opportunity to go and you can go every day of the week here. So those are some of the things we learned, the economic impact. Arts education was huge, a high priority. People, every time we talked to them, would talk about the need for more arts for their children in schools. And they talked about having the arts neighborhood close. People say, you know, I don't necessarily want to boot up and get dressed up to go to the theater, but I sure would like it in my neighborhood. I love those festivals. I love to be able to just wake up and go outside and participate in the arts. And in a more broader sense, why is that important? Well. You know, for a community. Well, it creates vibrancy. And you know yourself, in any neighborhood where there are arts activities going on, it feels safer. It feels like, hey, I can, I can meet my neighbor here. We can do things together. I have a sense of a neighborhood pride. 
And many of our neighborhoods, we need that. Yeah, and Mom, what do you think, too? I mean, I, art, for, it's good for anybody of any age, I think. But particularly like a young person growing up and developing, I, I think it can change the way, the, it can change the adult that they become. Steve, I think that this idea of arts as a luxury is such a fallacy. Oh, yeah. And it, 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 it is unfair, because if you think about the number of people whose natural inclination to, is to be creative, to be creative Mm -hmm. And it's that creativity, the development of that part of individuals that industry is demanding today. Yeah. And if we don't provide young people an opportunity to realize their full potential through the arts, then their full potential to be creative. And, you, and it doesn't have to be someone that's going to use the arts as a career. Like, I think the three of us are lucky. We kind of are, have been able to make a career of uh, our yes, passion for the directly, arts. Yes. But there are a lot of other people that uh, might do manual or factory jobs. That doesn't mean there's not a side of them that's not creative and they want to experience the arts in their own life in their own way. They, maybe they're not making a living out of it. But I would imagine that a lot of people who work for Google probably had <laughs> arts in their lives. Yeah. Wouldn't you think so? I would think so. <laughs> yes. and, and, the, and the quality that it brings to people's lives mm -hmm. to be able to both experience and perform, to, to, to use it as an outlet for what's inside. I think the arts makes you appreciate diversity and other cultures and things Have you haven't more thought empathy. about. Yeah. The other yeah. thing the arts do is they communicate stories. Mm -hmm. And I think what we're coming to learn, and there's just a whole body of research talking about the importance of storytelling, mm -hmm. um, that it is essential to the sense of self, mm -hmm. the sense of community, and a sense of understanding of our history. When we come back from the break in a couple of minutes, we're going to talk about the big reveal and everything. But what was that year-like process, uh, the evoke process of, of pulling all this information together? What was that like? Oh, it was amazing. It was amazing because to actually engage 3,000 people, and it, it was actually more than that, we had to conduct surveys. We had three different kinds of surveys. We had individual inter interviews. We had um, exhibitions that were interactive. We tried every way possible to get to as many people as possible. Mm -hmm. And again, we've got some images, I know, of some of the conversations that were going on. Uh, maybe we could look at one real quick before we're going to take a break in a second. But um, yeah, these, and they, they happened all over town, right? Talking all over to town, oh yes. We went as far as like East St. Louis, yes. We went as far east as East St. Louis and then to St. Charles. Uh, gathered people from diverse neighborhoods into one room, and they were happy to talk about I was going to say, they look <laughs> they, like they're having fun. <laughs> yes, they were definitely happy to talk about and the some, arts. somebody's on their mobile device. Sure. <laughs> of course, of I course. I had to point that out. They had to tweet it out to their friends. <laughs> well, we um, need to take a break. Yeah, good. And you, uh, uh, the Regional Arts Commission just did a big reveal just very recently, and you want to share that with our audience, don't you? I do. All right. We're talking about the Regional Arts <laughs> Commission and what's happening here in St. Louis. They're located on Del Mar in St. Louis. You know, check out uh, over their website and all the rest of that. But we'll be back with more City Corner right after this. So I'm Megan O, and we here at STL TV want to connect with you as we bring up-to-date information going on in your city. Whether it's events with the mayor, sports, music, and even spotlights on regional organizations, we're here to bring you the 411. STL TV social media is the spot to get the latest on our programs. Whether it's Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, we feature a number of our fantastic award-winning shows, as well as our wonderful personalities like me, Megan O. And keep your eyes peeled for our Facebook and Instagram stories of the goings on here at STL TV, brought to you by our great intern and volunteer staff. You can keep current with STL TV and its shows by following us on Facebook at STL TV and both Twitter and Instagram at STL TV channel. What are you waiting for, St. Louis? Get connected and in the know today. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh, have you seen that piece, piece on the Tiffany neighborhood on STL TV? No. Let me show you. My wife and I were looking for homes. We lived in the city all of her life, and there's just a, a different energy when you're in, in the city. Keep up with what's happening in your neighborhood. Watch STL TV. Be in the know. It takes less than one minute to find out if you may have prediabetes, and you can do it here. 
So what are you waiting for? Just go to the site. I'm Steve Potter, welcome back to City Corner. Today our guests from the Regional Art Commission are here. We're talking with Executive Director Felicia Shaw and also with uh, Chairman Mont Levy. And we're talking about the Evoke Initiative, which was a year-long project that RAC was involved in um, about getting out in the community and talking to members of the community about what they expect from the arts because the Regional Arts Commission helps fund the arts. Mm -hmm. Uh, nonprofit arts yes. in the city of St. Louis. Before we go any further, Amant, I'm going to ask them to put up um, this again because you wanted to make a point about your website, I think. Yeah, we did. The vision uh, rack STL will tell people information about what is, was revealed on September 13th, and we're going to talk about our Arts and Report. If people want information about RAC, about the grant uh, process, mm -hmm. about events, arts events, then they should go to uh, rac.stl. It's racstl.org, and that's the, the second website on that slide. Oh, I see. Okay, good. Yes. Good. Thanks very much. Mm -hmm. And we care because oh, good. we're taxpayers. Didn't you sort of make that point? Yes. This is your money, believe it or not. Um, when people come to St. Louis and stay in a hotel, a portion of that extra tax that they put on their bill go straight to the arts, okay. and we were established in 1985 to um, assist in distributing those funds to nonprofit arts right. groups. And Mont, when you were making the points about the website, so there might be a, an arts organization out there right now that has nothing to do with RAC, so it's kind of on them to get a hold of you to see if you can help them, right? It's on, oh, it's on both of us, actually. It's on them to find us, and it's on us to find them. All right, uh, you brought along this little magazine or report arts and uh, what is this all about well that's the culmination of all the work that we did for nearly two years in our investigation is this the big reveal we're talking about that is what was bigly revealed <laughs> yes and this just happened days ago <laughs> yes days ago we had uh, hundreds of people who came out to in, uh, to celebrate with us and at that time we were able to tell them well what did we find out so we paused and took time to learn about the arts, to ask people through surveys and interviews and interactive exhibitions. Uh, we asked them the question of, you know, how do the arts show up in your lives? And how can the arts do a better job of making St. Louis better? I just and saw they, this on this page. Yeah. How can the arts make St. Louis a better place? That's right. That's what you're saying. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. And then we published the report and we revealed it at the big event. Well, tell me about the big event. What happened the other day? Oh my gosh, we had um, bands and free food and music and artists performing. And of course, we talked a lot about what was in that report. We wanted people to know, this is what you said, this is what we heard. And Mont, would you comment on that? What were some of these findings? Well, again, and I think we talked about it a bit earlier, I think the themes that were quite overwhelming, one, the sense that people really do love the arts in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. They remind us that we tend to underappreciate actually what we have in our community. Mm -hmm. um, but those who come from out of town are just always amazed by how much is here. We found out that the arts are just so important in people's lives. Mm -hmm. They want it. They want it as part of their lives. They want it in their neighborhoods. Are you able to be more specific why people feel it's important or how it really affects them or how it improves their lives? Well, one of the things they talked about is uh, their children. Uh, people always want their children to have a better life than they do. And they notice that when kids have the arts in their lives and their education, they do better in school, uh, graduation rates are higher, and they become g better employees. Huh. Uh, let's take a look at some more images we have. I think we have a couple anyway. Yeah, we do. And yes. you can kind of explain what we're looking at. Yeah, this was one of many uh, uh, engagements that we did with the community. You can see people willingly came out to share their ideas with us. We went as far as East St. Louis and, and talking to people, even though East St. Louis... that's not St. Louis. But you know I'm what? I'm being devil's advocate. I know you are. And you know, people from East St. Louis come to St. Louis all the time. Right. And they sit in our seats and buy our tickets, so we wanted to hear from them. I actually live in Alton, Illinois, and guess so what? So you're one a of those. Of, a lot of the <laughs> seats in St. Louis are filled up from, from people, people like all you. over. So we appreciate you and then we went as far west as St. Charles uh -huh. uh, because they come over as well we wanted to hear from them as well 
So I guess um, I'm assuming you have a whole lot of information in there. So are there some major takeaways or things that did you well, like us to Well, I think we should realize? talk about the title because we called this report Arts and because one of the other things we heard was the arts belong in every aspect of our community, whether it's in health, whether it's in transportation, whether it's in economics. The arts can play a part to help us grow and each of these segments can help improve the quality of how we deliver mm -hmm. services in this community. And so the title of Arts and makes reference to this sort of cross-sectionality that it is now a, a greater priority than ever for us to help the arts evolve mm -hmm. as a major part of civic life mm -hmm. in our community. Yeah. That's nice. That was another engagement, just people sitting around sharing ideas. Oh, that's on the ideas. cover of Arts and, yeah. It, it is on the cover, yeah. Uh -huh. and, and you know, we talk about arts in the economy, arts and health. We, we collected data to shore up that the point that if when the arts are at, unsiloed and we come out of our theaters and we go into the neighborhoods, we're able to work with other social service agencies in making St. Louis better. Can you kind of give me an example of that? Well, just think about arts and health. What happens when people um, gather together to dance? All of a sudden, they're getting the recreational aspects of dancing because it's a physical act, uh -huh. and they're also meeting their neighbors. Uh, they're doing something creative. Um, I think it can combat depression. Uh, it helps people feel more connected to their community, makes them more uh, engaged civically. They're not sitting home by themselves watching soap they're operas. They're not isolated. They're not right. isolated anymore. Right. Exactly. Right. We also, one of the biggest findings for me was the, the real uh, acknowledgement of the importance of individual artists. Uh, St. Louis is a great artist town, and you know why? It's affordable. And so where you see other artists maybe moving from bigger cities like Chicago and New York, they come here because they can not only work, they can buy a home. I have a friend that grew up in uh, New York, and she was telling me just the other week <laughs> that she, she goes back for visits, and uh -huh. she said it's gotten so insanely expensive Insane. that it's, it's changing the kind of people that are living there because not everyone can live there anymore. Not everyone, but people can actually live here. Artists can live here, make a living, and purchase a home and have a good quality of life. So that's what we heard also that, hey, Let's attract even more artists because when artists move into a neighborhood, it becomes fun, it becomes trendy, and everyone wants to live there. And if artists can't <laughs> make a little money, uh, they may not do it. But we also heard from artists that they need more support in this community right. because there's a point in which they find a need to move on. Yeah. Because they're not getting, there's not enough artist housing, there's not enough studio space. So, and there's, when you say support, are you talking specifically financial support? Is that what you mean by that? Well, it's, it's, not it, always. it's, it's infrastructure if, mm -hmm. it, in many ways. Mm -hmm. Again, the art studios and a affordable gallery housing, they can use, and a gallery, gallery they can and, use, rehearsal space, things like that. And so these, th that support can come from different places and part of RAC's role will be to be in partnership to help make these things happen. But with all these arts organizations that uh, they're looking for your assistance, what is the process like when you guys, I don't, do you have a committee to decide who gets what and who qualifies? I would think that it would be fairly complicated because you don't do that lightheartedly. It is very complicated um, and we try to simplify it as much as we can for the community because we have this much money and this much need. <laughs> and so the, the, the whole notion of how do we decide um, who gets what, it does become complicated, but we try to uncomplicate it by being as transparent as possible, uh, making sure that people have as much technical assistance that, that they need to fill out the applications, and then uh, to, to, to recognize that everyone won't get funded, but those who are doing the best work will. And just because you apply one year and don't get funny, that doesn't mean you should give up, right? Never. You should come right back, get better, and get back in the game again. Uh -huh. Absolutely. I think there's another really important finding that I wouldn't want us to not talk about. And throughout this report, we talk about the importance of racial and cultural equity in this community. And the need, it's been identified in lots of different segments of our community. Mm -hmm. We certainly heard it loud and clear in our engagement with the community that we have issues around equity and access and feeling and, and people feeling welcome uh, mm -hmm. in venues, mm -hmm. of people wanting to see support for the arts in their communities. Mm -hmm. I wasn't sure where you're going there, and so I want you to clarify a little bit. At first I thought you were talking about maybe organizations, like maybe <coughs> certain groups of people 
don't get the attention or funding they need as an organization. Then mm -hmm. I also heard you about talking about patrons of the arts. That's a little so bit. So did I understand that right? That there, it's both those it's, things. It's both those things. Um, we know that there are many arts organizations that are really struggling, small and mid-sized organizations. And we also know that there are audiences who would love to be more engaged, but don't because they don't see themselves on the stages or they don't see themselves in the exhibition halls. So it's really about equity is about getting everyone to feel welcome, creating access for all, and making sure that all the abundance of cultural activities that we have are shared by everyone. So um, I imagine probably a lot of things you found out from this big reveal and this study that you did for a year, probably a lot of things you guys had talked about knew about ahead of time, right? But uh, maybe you mentioned a few of them already, but there had to be some things you went, oh, I didn't think of that. You know, when you work in the arts, you're, you're, you're never surprised. <laughs> um, and so I can't say that I went like, oh, I've never heard this before. Mm -hmm. But the main takeaway for me was the affirmation that people are ready for change. And that's really big in St. Louis when people are saying, yeah, we've had a great run, 30 years, we've done a great job. Now, let's look at 2018 differently than we did in 1985. What does St. Louis want today? And to say, yes, Rack, lead the way to whatever that looks like. And Mont, or either of you, do we have an idea to answer <laughs> those questions? Or is it all in your arts and magazine? Well, or? there's two things that I guess I would say. On the one hand, yes, there are certain answers. I mean, in the sense that uh, this idea of, of support for artists and infrastructure. So we are already engaged with the Kranzberg Foundation um, uh, on a project for artist housing. Mm -hmm. um, and um, we, we, we will be launching shortly an initiative for public art in downtown St. Louis, Louis mm -hmm. which is all part of the economic engine that, mm -hmm. uh, to attract tourism. But RAC is about to begin its own internal planning effort to really take a look at the roadmap that's been provided by Arts and mm -hmm. to understand just how we should respond in the years ahead. So in conclusion, people that are listening and watching right now, what should they do? Uh, read the report. <laughs> and how do they get it? <clears throat> they can go to our website and download it. There are two reports. Uh, the one that you showed earlier is the shorter version. Um, it's about 37 pages. Mm -hmm. uh, and then if they really want to get really nerdy about it and get all into the data and the we detail. Do. You do. Um, there's one that's about 130 something pages and they can download that from our website as well. Well, I hope they'll do exactly that. <laughs> we want to thank Felicia Shaw and Mont Levy from the Regional Arts Commission. Thank you for uh, sharing this just released report out. Thanks for and, having uh, more us. more part of the arts, I guess, right? right. Have Absolutely. Us, have us back in a year or so. We'll tell you what's, what's happening on the, on the report. You got the invite. Okay, great. Thanks. Thanks. Thank Thanks, you both Steve. so much. Okay. I appreciate it. I'm Steve Potter. That's all the time we have for City Corner. Thanks for watching and join us next time.